Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you're new. My name is Kristen, this is my booktube, and in today's video we are going to be talking about my November TBR. So we are getting close to the end of 2023, and I think it is safe to say that I am not going to finish 75 books in 2023. We are still quite short of that goal, but that is okay, it has been a crazy year. I have had a couple reading slumps throughout the year, so I am not completely heartbroken about not hitting 75 books. But we're going to keep trucking and see how many we can finish in the next two-ish months. There are still a couple days left in October, so there is still some time to cram in some spooky books, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. As I continue to move into my new apartment, rearrange furniture, things like that, I've been listening to more audiobooks as I've been doing those things on top of my regular audiobook listening. This isn't going to be an exhaustive TBR by any means. November to me kind of feels like that weird middle ground reading wise at least where you know you're past halloween and all of the spooky season books but you're not quite in a christmas mode just yet at least not in the u.s because we still have thanksgiving in there as well so it's just kind of general fall vibes at this time of year and even the book club at my office is combining november and december into one book club meeting so there's only one book that we are reading. November just always feels like kind of a weird part of the year for me reading wise. I'm usually trying to make up some ground and read as many books as I can. I get into a lot of series around this time because it's a lot easier to bulk out your read books list if you are reading a series then you don't even have to think about what book to read next. You just keep going in the series. And I guess that is kind of what I have planned for November, but it's not really in an attempt to catch up on my TBR. It's more so related to current events, if you wanna call them that, that are happening in the month of November and in December that I want to prepare for. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and jump into this TBR video. It might be a little bit on the short side just because it's not a super concrete or exhaustive list, but I do have some books that I want to intentionally read in the month of November. The first book on my TBR, and this is in no particular order, is the book club pick for my work book club for November slash December, and that is Meet Me Under the Mistletoe. So this is a more Christmassy kind of book because like I said, my book club is only doing one meeting for the months of November and December. So they are going for the more Christmassy vibe and just picking a Christmassy book for that time. So this is probably going to be a book that I'm going to save until maybe later in the month even after Thanksgiving potentially, to get me into the Christmas spirit a little bit. I don't really know anything about this book other than I believe it's a romance. It has one of those like cartoony romance covers that a lot of recent romances have been using. <laughs> It's kind of funny how romances just kind of like all look the same. I don't know if that is like an intentional choice by the publishers or what, but I'm assuming this is a romance based solely on the cover. And I don't really know anything else about it other than it's the book club pick for my work book club. So I'm gonna read it so that I can talk about it with people. And the rest of the books that are on my intentional TBR for November are all part of a series. And the first series that I want to get through and finish in the month of November is the Hunger Games series. So I am currently still reading The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, and I am getting very close to being finished with that, but I have not started my Hunger Games read through just yet. So once I finish The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, I want to go in and reread the Hunger Games books and also watch the movies as I do that. I do want to record a kind of reading vlog around that and I want to do that in my new apartment. But in order to do that, I need to get a couch. I still don't have a couch yet. <laughs> 
mostly because I am still not fully moved in. I literally just today rearranged my living room to where there is actually a space for a couch now. So in the coming weeks, I will be actually getting a couch putting together my living room and making it to where I'm actually able to watch the movies. So until I get that all squared away, that is kind of what's holding up that Hunger Games reread and movie watching event. And I've also intentionally slowed down on reading The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes just so that I don't finish it too early and then read other books between finishing that one and seeing the movie to where I kind of forget some of the things in the book. When I actually do go and see the movie in theaters, I want the book to be fresh enough in my mind to where I can pick out those little differences and changes that they make from the book to the screen and also just have the plot details fresh in my mind so that I can kind of compare what I was imagining in my head to what is presented on the screen. I think in my opinion, based solely on my memory from 10 years ago when the Hunger Games movies came out, I remember thinking that the first Hunger Games movie particularly was quite faithful to the book. Now, I may be misremembering, there is a good chance of that, but I did finish the first Hunger Games book and then immediately go see the movie in theaters. So I did have the book fresh in my mind at the time and I do remember thinking that as far as movie adaptations of books go, it was a very faithful adaptation to what I imagined going on in the book at least. I know that other people had issues with what was presented on screen versus what they saw in their heads when they were reading, but for me personally, I thought that the Hunger Games movie, the first one at least, was quite faithful to the book. I can't really speak to the other ones because I read the books very quickly and then I watched the movies as they came out, so there was more time between the second and third books, so they could have been a little less faithful to the book. And I probably wouldn't have noticed if I'm honest, but in any case, I want to do a similar thing with The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes so that I can see if that book is also a faithful screen adaptation as I remember The Hunger Games being. And then when I do my reread and rewatch, we can revisit those feelings that I had when I saw the movie the first time and see if I still think it's a faithful adaptation 10 years on. Alrighty, and then the second series that I want to read in the month of November is the Percy Jackson series. So these books are loved by so many people. I personally never read these books when I was the target demographic age, I guess you would say. When I was in middle school, I was reading Harry Potter, I was reading Twilight, I was reading a series of unfortunate events, and many other books that were not the Percy Jackson series. I don't know why I didn't gravitate towards that series. It could have been because I didn't really get into Greek mythology until I was in high school, but whatever the case, I have not read these books before. I did see the first movie when it came out years and years ago with Logan Learman, I think that's his name, as Percy Jackson. You know, the one where he uses the shiny back of an iPod touch to look around corners and beat Medusa. That just really dates that movie so much. <laughs> but I do know that that particular movie adaptation is not well loved by the fans of the book series. So I figured since the series is coming out in December, I should go ahead and dive right in and start a read of that series before the television series comes out. I do physically own the first book, but that is the only book of the series that I own. So I may end up doing all audiobooks for that series. I may go out and buy the rest of the series at some point, but I do want to read that series in the month of November and then watch the television show when it comes out in December. So just with those two series, that's already like eight books. And there will probably be other thrillers and things that I toss in here and there. I will have some rollover books from this month to November, like the ones that I'm physically reading, such as The Intern and Murder in the Family, just because I know those are going to take me longer than the time that I have left in October to finish. So I will have some other rollovers that I will be reading periodically throughout the month, but as far as an intentional TBR for the month of November, those are the eight books that I really want to focus on. 
And then there will be other ones here and there that are rolled over from October or that just catch my interest while I'm scrolling around on TikTok or Scribed or Audible, you know, wherever I'm lurking at the time. So yeah, that is pretty much it for my November TBR. I know that this is a pretty short video and there's not a lot of substance behind, you know, the actual books that I intend on reading. Mostly because I either am going in completely blind to the books on my TBR, or you know, the series that I'm planning on reading this month are both very well-known series that I feel like most people have at least an idea of what they're about. So you don't really need me to explain to you, you know, what The Hunger Games is about. And they will also be things that I will be talking about more as the month goes on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a short one, but my November TBR is pretty simple, pretty to the point. So there wasn't a lot of context and things that I had to go into for this video. If you did enjoy this video, go ahead and leave a like down below and let me know. You should also subscribe while you're down there because I put out new videos every single Saturday around noon central standard time, sometimes a little later, but every weekend for sure. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and I will see you in the next video, probably with more moving content because I've done a lot of work and I haven't really been talking about it or recording it. I've just been doing. I need to give you guys an update anyway, so there will probably be some more moving content in future videos. So if that's something you're interested in, look forward to that and I will see you in the next video. Bye.